favors. If you like this video, check out my channel. I have tons more videos on DIY boat building concepts. Check us out in the Tiny Boat Nation on Facebook. Gain access to the largest and fastest growing community of DIY boat builders out there. And if you want access to exclusive videos never released to the YouTube public, find out how you can become a VIP on Patreon.com. What's going on guys, this is Mike from TV Nation. And today we're gonna to be going over the Tough Box Live Wall Mod. I'm finally far enough in this boat to do it. It's Saturday, it's super piss hot, super bright out here. So, pardon the informalities. The Tough Box Mod, to my knowledge, has been born here on TV Nation, or at least refined here on TV Nation, and put into a lot of uh, John Boat to Bass Boat conversions. Um, they've been in quite a few. A gentleman who put out a 1436 John Boat mod, he put a 25 gallon Tough Box Live Wall mod in that thing, and it came out really, really well. I just don't, there's no video footage of it here, but the, the short footage that he did promote, it uh, showed really well. So since then, people have been kind of been doing them. I've ran my own version. I ran my own welded version because the HTP Tough Boxes um, can be welded. The box by themselves can hold a 200 pound person on top of it so they're pretty tough and but there's still ways we have to get around still things we have to do to prevent flex and ways that we can make these things successful so they'll last you a while and hold lots of fish i have some in testing and uh by someone who tests all my stuff on all my mods out extensively i don't know how many fish have been out of his welded version so we're putting in a non-welded version today that's just clean no cuts and so we're going to go over some of the materials we're going to use for this boat right now we're going to use a 500 gph um, gallons per hour uh, Atwood Tsunami Village Pump and I think these are pretty solid. I mean, I've ran them in two live wall kits so far One of them has got extensive amount of hours. The other one is mine, which doesn't have a whole lot of time in but No problems for either of them. They're submergible, but they're also able to be cleared and We're gonna use a uh, this is the actual inlet nozzle that we'll be using and it opens and closes. This is gonna be pulling, this is gonna be the nozzle we use when water is pulling from the lake into the live well. Um, we'll be running them off for that and it just obviously slots in like that. We're running these. We're gonna be running one of these for a runoff. We might be running both of these for the bilge out. They actually sell bilge out kits with a through hole fitting to bilge out the water. Um, and they sound pretty cheap. You can find them at Walmart, or Kmart. Um, today we're going to be running a Flowrite through fitting. A gentleman by the name of SNG Fishing. Um, his videos are pretty prevalent on YouTube. He found actually this part. I mean, as long as this is open, it's got a little piston, so it controls how the water flows. So as long as it's you have it coming through here and it flows, and then you pull it out, the piston shoves forward, cuts this off, so the water then bilges out. So it just. So it's the easiest way. I have been doing a Y gate mod, you know, and you can do a pretty cheap Y gate mod for like five, between five and ten bucks. You can you can put the pieces together at Lowe's, Home Depot. I have I have videos on the Y gate mod that I'll put down here in the uh, the description. But speaking of the the aerator pump taking the inlet water, we're gonna run a Johnson 800. Oh, this is a 500 GPH built pump, but it's gonna pump water from outside into the live wall. Johnson's a really, really good brand. It's kind of, it's gonna be the best brand if you're gonna choose two, it's just a little pricey, but I got this one for a screaming deal on Amazon. I couldn't pass it up. I generally like to run 800 GPH, like pumping the initial water in, but this one will do fine. We're running the screen. Then the hose, we're running three quarter inch hose. These are all three quarter inch fittings. Fitting, fitting. These are all three quarter inch fittings. So if you're going to go and get this hose, you can get you can get the braided hose at Lowe's. It's recommended braided if it's going to be a lot of bends. And I have non-braided hose. I mean, this stuff is kind of crappy. Like, it's it's much easy. It's much better just to get the braided hose because it doesn't kink. This stuff will kink. But the reason I have this because it's a little bit softer. My plan is to make a chill box that with enough tubing, hopefully four feet enough. If not, I'll go six, and if not, I'll go more. And then it's really contingent on how well the pump can pump that much water. Through the hose the longer the hose the harder it's going to be for any pump to pump water through so we're going to see how all well this goes but let's check this let's check this out let's, let's get going on it okay so first thing you have to do is make a catch lip to hold the water in when your boat's rocking right here i tried to use the initial plastic lid but then i reinforced it with aluminum sheeting on the top and then after that it was reinforced with foam all around and then grip lined on the top for aesthetics and then we framed it in the actual boat. This was the basis on how I made my boat. I plan for framing around the live well. 
because of its actual height and everything. But here we are a lot farther on the build after we foamed around it and we've stuck um, sheeting around to, I mean, keep the foam rigid. So we have a very, very rigid structure in conjunction with everything in the bottom. Down here is where we cut the initial hole through the top box. We gave it enough space for the actual clearance right here for the screen. That's about as close as we could get by going, you know, without cutting into the seam, which would have caused a lot of problems. It wouldn't have been able to seal. So it's just enough area to seal and be cool. And so the screen obviously will go on, but we're going to probably give it a cut right there. We're just going to mark it with a pen. We're, we're probably going to give it a cut right there. That's appropriate. That'll give it more than enough room for the screen to be on there and suck in water and stop debris and poop and dead friggin' you know, crawl dad shells that would really screw up the motor. So that screen's essential. You can't do this without the screen. You'll you'll ruin that pump fast. Now I have a hole here, um, a hole down there. So that's where it's gonna recirc. And then I have to have a hole through to bilge out. And I'm gonna... Here's the hole that we drilled for the actual aerator pump, aerator pump. And I sand off these burrs. We clean around the edges here and then we, once the edge is clean, we can silicone each side of these with, be generous with the marine silicone. double layer here and then if we need more then we'll... so now we have installed the pumps we started installing the bilge pumps we ran all the electronics I mean the wiring through the electric box um, we installed the through hole fittings of the appropriate height over the the center line of the boat over the water line and here's everything ran and clean and ready for testing and we ran it to a switch panel here um, this is the finished product and we're ready to get it tested on the lake to see what it's going to be about and here is it with actual ice in it and here's the finished product. All right guys, we're on the switch panel here and we're gonna fill the fill pump. We're filling this monster up. Open up the, I'm gonna put my, my remaining ice in here. Yeah, thank you. So, you can have it. Yeah, it's already seen that the water's already filling up the tube. Before it... That's not enough ice. Something. We got a drink in there. All right. What's up? Okay. Now we're gonna stop filling it. That's plenty of water. That's Probably a lot of water in there. Who's gonna have trouble cleaning? Okay. Now check out this nozzle here. This is a a tube for not. If you pull it out, it bilges all the water out. If you push it in, it recirks. So we're gonna recirc now. Ready? Yep. Yeah. See all the water running through the tubing. All right, now go ahead and pull that nozzle out. Wait, 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 don't do it. Okay, pull it out now. Go ahead. See? Oh, See? Yeah. Like okay, now, now go ahead and stop, stop it, stop it. Pull it, yeah, push it back in. Okay. All right. And that is a success. The water does feel cooler. Okay, guys, so this is the finished product of the live well. We have our our pump system chilled and ice to cool the water because it's really hot water out here. Um, and so we're trying to at least drop it a few degrees. I think a live well timer would probably help us do that even more because the water would sit in the ice longer and chill longer, but we're gonna refine that later. But this also acts as a cooler. We can stick our drinks down in there. Nothing too fancy, but it helps. It's right next to the, to the pilot center. So, I mean, Drains bossish, dude. It's like a perfect drain. <laughs> wow. Doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, 
Okay, so the remaining excess water we're draining right now. We're getting it going. So that's all the water that the, that the, uh, the research pump couldn't pick up and take out. Okay guys, so that was my finished product for this live wall mod. I think it came out fairly good despite, you know, a few deals. My chill box came a little later and then how I thought I was gonna go about it was kind of just a mix. I wanted to make a chill box slash cooler mod because you, you know, every every boat kind of needs a cooler, let's be honest. Had I planned ahead for that mod, I would have used, I would have just welded HTPE the same way I welded the uh, the electric box. And that would probably would have been a much better cooler. We would, it would held, a, it would have dissipated heat a lot faster. I used aluminum in there because that's really the only thing I could workably use and keep together without having to like really mold or weld something. I mean, we were just too far in the build. So that's why I used aluminum for the chill box, but I would definitely use something else if you could. I also would have used a live wall timer because if I, if I could have water flow through 60 seconds and then pause for a minute, just chill in the actual tubing. And that would have ran more tubing because I, I initially only ran four feet because I was worried the pump would have trouble running it through four feet of tubing. It ran it like nothing. So I would have ran six or eight feet maybe even 10 feet of tubing, however much I could stick in that box. And um, I mean, the more wire that stays in the tubing longer, the, the, the longer it chills. And then the longer it pauses in the set of water on a timer, the longer it chills. So you're really, really throwing a lot of cold water. And I might've even ran two research pumps. One that's just running all the time because constant flow of water is, is real important for, you know, just cool water in general. It keeps the water cooler in general. And then I would've had one pausing chilling the water and throwing it in, pausing, chilling the water and throwing it in. I think that would have been real good. Uh, but gradually, the how it ran through right now was fine. It did chill the water, it did keep it cooler. That was a small mouth in there. Fact, small mouth need a lot more oxygen than a uh, large mouth. And uh, I mean, they're harder to keep alive in the live well. And that was in the middle of summer. It is July here in Lake Havasu. If anybody here has fished um, down here in the summer, you know what it's like. And that small mouth, he, he was picking it up that was him releasing it and it was still alive and kicking maybe even a little bit more alive than it was when he pulled out of the water so thank you Jordan for demoing that for me I really appreciate it and uh, let me know what you guys think about this mod so it's definitely one that's taking off more and more in people's boats as we keep um, doing this DIY you know build building community through tiny boat nation uh, expect to see more mods out there people are really going forward with this and this is just the beginning for me in my next boat I'm really going to super refine this this chill box method and, and add some more stuff into it so stay tuned for it stay tuned for the reveal of this boat this boat is sick by far the best boat i have ever built until i can put out my skiff and that's coming soon also a shout out to pirate fishing also check out his live wall video in the bottom it's uh his is a much it's a better version than this he actually went and bought a an oem professional grade live wall and then converted it in much the same way i did this also check out John for JDS Outdoors because his fabrication skills are above and beyond. A shout out to everybody on Patreon. Thank you guys for helping me support and sustain this channel as it massively continues to grow and become unsustainable for me. And because of that, all of you have seen this video way before the YouTube hook has ever seen it. And so that's just one of the things I'm going to do for you guys. I'm going to do a lot more here and just uh, wait for that to come. Shout out to everybody out there in the Tiny Boat Nation. Keep on building. I've seen some really good next level builds coming out lately and I can't wait to see more. Alright guys, check it out. Peace.